Hey guys, I have something good for you today. I have making attachments onto posts. So if we click this attachment button and then we select an attachment and then we write something and click post, it is now attached. This is pretty hacky first version, but it is working, which I am very pleased about. And we are using pre-signed URLs requested from our object storage server that then the client, so the browser actually uses to upload directly to the object storage S3. We're using Garage. You can look at my previous video about setting up Garage. And to do that, it first, when you click that attachment button, it requests a pre-signed URL from TRPC from our server. And if we look at the result data, you can see that pre-signed URL that it uses. And then if we look in our network, you can probably see there's some request uh, XRH. And yeah, there's the post or the put, I mean. And so let's figure out how I did this. If we go to our IDE, let me increase the screen size. And so if we look at our, I think it's, let's just, actually I just forgot where it is. It's in the source, server, API, routers, post. Okay, so if we look at the create pre-signed URL, it requests from AWS get signed URL. So that's what we're using from the newer SDK. And it is using a put object command, which allows the user to put an object into the object storage. This can be any sort of command. You can generate a signed URL for any sort of different combination or whatever. And we also generate a key that is used, that is sent along with it, that is used to upload. And that key is later put into when the user creates the post, so clicks create, it then sends along that file key for the TRPC mutation. And we use that to then check the object, you know, get some info about it. Let's go over this. So this isn't perfect, it probably needs to be wrapped in transaction. The file needs to be deleted if it fails and so on. But, you know, all those caveats aside, but let's look at it. So you can see we create a post, we see if the file key exists, then go through it. We generate a new UID because a pre-signed URL can be used multiple times. So you can upload a file and then you can continue uploading to that same key multiple times. So you can imagine what if a user uploads a file, clicks create, then while we are creating the post, the user then uploads a new file that's malicious or something. So you probably need to check for that. Do that, we check the original object we get a stream for that object. We get the file type. If there's no file type, it fails. We create a new key. We copy the object to that new key. Then we get the new object. We compare it with the old object. This should actually be checking a hash probably. And then we delete the old object if all of that succeeds. And then we check the size of the new object. And then we create a file and the database using Prisma of that new object. And then we create an attachment that uses the post and the file ID. So now as the attachment is associated with the post and then we just return the post. So this can be probably optimized multiple ways. So subscribe if you want to see how that is done in the future. But continuing on, the other thing to note is I'm using two versions of the S3 SDK. I probably need to convert all of this over to the newer version. Uh, if you see you know, anything S3, like head object, this is using the older S3 version, I believe. So I'll convert that over eventually. If we look in S3.ts, I think this is the newer version. So also be aware of that. And that's gotten from the AWS SDK client S3. Could be wrong about that, so. But anyways, continuing on. The other thing to note is if we look at our Docker, nginx, nginx.conf, I have an nginx server running between the user and the S3 server. And that is because uh, Garage, the S3 server that we're using, it's kind of wonky with cores, so I just set up this Nginx 
to add these uh, cores headers to the request that way you can do cross origin uploads and all that sort of stuff and one other thing is I'm setting the host header to the HTTP host because all of our stuff is running in Docker so that means let's say a request comes in and the host might be different than what is the host in the container so if you just use dollar sign host that could be a different host than the HTTP host you know so that is why we are setting that and let me think is there anything other to note I don't think so Make sure you subscribe and follow the progress for creating Jibber, the federated social network. It's quite fun, quite enjoyable, so stay tuned for more.